Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Ray Spencer, and I'm the homicide lieutenant with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. We thought it was very important to have you here this afternoon so we could address multiple questions, but also express our gratitude to the multiple law enforcement agencies that have made this arrest possible, specifically the local office here of the FBI and also the Denver office of the FBI, along with the San Jose Police Department. I do want to give a timeline just to kind of walk through some things uh, relating this investigation. So on Monday, May 24th, the father of Liam returned home to his house in San Jose, California. When the father arrived home, he noticed that all of Liam's belongings and all of Samantha's belongings were gone. There was a message that was left for him by Samantha. And I'm just going to quote a little bit of that message, but she specifically tells him, quote, I'm sorry I had to do it like this. She also goes on to say that I'm going to try to get a house for Liam and I, and that we can talk about this in the future. There was nothing suspicious in that message that would lead the father to believe that Liam or Samantha was, were involved in any kind of foul play or that there was any harm uh, potentially to come. Over the next week, the father basically did not know what to do. It was on July f or June 1st that the father contacted the San, San Jose Police Department because he wanted to document the incident. San Jose Police responded to his house and they spoke with him. The patrol officers listened to the message. I've also listened to the message, and there was nothing suspicious from that message. It indicated that Samantha had basically left him and took the child, or took Liam with uh, her, and they were going somewhere else. He did not want to get Samantha in trouble, and he chose not to file a report to document the parental abduction. It was on the 4th when a friend of Samantha's noticed the uh, sketch that had been circulating on local news networks and she also knew that Samantha was missing. After observing that, she then went to the San Jose Police Department and explained to them that she felt that Liam could potentially be the person in that sketch. As soon as San Jose police were presented with that information, they immediately launched an investigation and were very persistent in getting a hold of me. That is when they spoke with me that evening, and that's when we began coordinating our investigations. It is the following morning that we flew there, retrieved the pillow from Liam's bedroom, and brought that back to our forensics lab. So. We have the, I talked yesterday about the information where we could put Samantha in Laguna Beach. We also could place her in Victorville. Since the press conference yesterday, we can place her at a local hotel here in Las Vegas on the 27th. She, when she was at that hotel, we believe from the information that we have right now that Liam was alive. From there, on the 28th, is when we found Liam's body at Mountain Springs. This morning, at around 6 a.m., members of the FBI's apprehension team in Denver took her into custody. I will turn this uh, press conference over at this point to Jeremy with the FBI. All right, good afternoon. Well, I stood up here last week announcing the reward uh, the FBI was offering for the identification of our victim. I expressed that this child had the right to be referenced by his given name, and he deserved law enforcement's commitment to this investigation. While the outcome is heartbreaking, there's a sense of closure that Liam Husted will no longer be referred to as a John Doe. This morning, arrest was made by FBI's Denver's Rocky Mountain Safe Streets Task Force, which is made possible due to the coordinated effort between members of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, the Las Vegas Criminal Apprehension Team, and the FBI Denver Field Office. While different cities, FBI task forces may have different names, 
in different cities, but their purpose is all the same. It's standard practice for the FBI to assist our local law enforcement partners if we have a tool, a tactic, or a technique that will be of any use. And this investigation, we are fortunate that we're able to assist in this case. We're very thankful for our strong working relationships within the Las Vegas Police Department, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, and the law enforcement officers within this community. I do want to just extend my appreciation to the media for your cooperation and your assistance in getting out as much information as you possibly could in such a quick time frame, and also to thank their public for their commitment and for their assistance in us getting to a resolution. So at this point, I'll take some questions if you do have them. Any information on the arrest? Was it a tip and was it 6 a.m. local time here? Or? It, it was around 6 o'clock local time, uh, give or take a few minutes this morning. I'm not going to get into the investigative tactics that were utilized by the uh, apprehension team in Denver, but it was solely on the work that the FBI task force there did that led to the arrest. And, or go ahead. Um, obviously, you guys have been working on this case really hard for the past uh, two or so weeks. Um, how significant is solving this case for you and your detectives? Well, like I said, you know, our the entire department, specifically my detectives, myself, it's emotionally draining working a case like this. Being able to have closure and identify Liam was very important, and now that we're able to uh, make an arrest on this case is extremely uh, gratifying in the back. Um, last we heard she was seen on the 31st at a hotel in Denver, a lot of times has passed since then. Do you get a sense of what she was doing in Denver? Was she still at bouncing around the hotels? Any idea why she chose in Denver? Or? We don't know why she was in Denver. I know, like I said, we had we had her in Colorado even before the hotel room on the 31st. And we do know she was at, again at a hotel this morning in Denver. Why Denver, we don't know. Uh, we have detectives that are uh, on the ground right now conducting interviews with her. And again, that's ongoing. So some of that information could come out uh, as a result of those. Yes. Is it believed that she was alone during this to last week or so? During the time that Liam was killed, uh, we believe she was alone at that time. Was she, uh, the time, was she also alone in Denver when she was found? She was not alone in Denver when she was found. However, the person that was taken, uh, that she was with in Denver, we do not believe has any involvement whatsoever in this case. I have a couple of other questions. Okay, I'll come back with you, Ken. Yes. Uh, was uh, Rodriguez uh, arrested peacefully? Was there any resistance or anything like that? She was taken into custody without incident. What happens uh, to the car? Is it considered part of evidence? And how, what do you do since it's in Denver and you guys are so we are currently making arrangements. The FBI sealed the vehicle this morning when she was taken into custody. We will have that vehicle towed back to Las Vegas and processed at the LVMPD forensics lab. Okay. The person she was found with in Denver is male or female? Uh, she was with a male in, uh, this morning and in Denver. With one person. That is correct. So you, one person, a male in Denver, had she stayed in some place other than a hotel? That we don't know at this point. And again, no. we're in the process of interviewing her right now. Yes. Um, Trying to piece this together, uh, she left she went to Laguna, she was there for like a day, day and a half, and then came to Las Vegas and stayed, and then to Denver. It seems just like such a, an odd route to take. Do you have any sense of why this was her path, what her intentions were at all during this trip? It appears, and this is just uh, our detective speculating, that she drove down Pacific Coast Highway when we have her in Laguna Beach, and then shortly thereafter, she's in the Victorville area. We don't know why that route was taken. Vanessa? When you're trying to identify a body, and in particular a child like this, and you have that sketch and you're asking for information, how does that information get to other police departments, and how much do you rely on them if they do have a missing child? And I know in this case it wasn't a missing report, but how much do you rely on the other departments? Well, that information we coordinate through the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And I also, going back, I, I, we would also not be here if it was not the work that the National Center did. Uh, their cooperation and their assistance is paramount in this investigation. So when that sketch is generated, that sketch is sent out to multiple agencies. But 
again, you're looking at a sketch. I mean, I'll tell you what I have learned over the last 10 days is how many missing children there are nationally. I was inundated with reports of missing children from all over the United States. And when I said we had hundreds of tips come in, we were going through all of those because there are so many missing children in the United States. And trying to make an identification from the photograph of the missing children, you know, it's a very complicated and time-consuming process. Yes? Do we know the relationship between Liam's father and Rodriguez? Are they married? Are they divorced? Do they have joint custody? What, what's going on? I believe it's a common law type marriage. They've been together for an extensive amount of time. They are both the parents of Liam. Yes? Um, before I ask about the reward, especially the sports on that, will you tell us how Liam died? Uh, right now, uh, we're not going to get into the specifics on how he died. We do have uh, an idea of how he died We're, until the coroner releases the actual result of the autopsy, which is pending toxicology. We're not going to discuss that at this point. And just to follow up on your next question, uh, we the FBI does not disclose or discuss uh, the results of reward, uh, the results of the reward money. So, is there any clearer picture of why this this may have happened? As far again, we should have a little bit better idea on motive once we get to the investigation continues. Like I said, we're in Denver right now. We're still following up on a lot of those leads. So, is it is it too early to ask you about the special needs uh, relationship, special needs of Liam? I don't. I don't. His father refers to those uh, in an email to the San Jose. Yeah, regardless of what the father has discussed, is that we don't discuss medical uh, medical history or information uh, publicly. Yes. Can you give me a sense of her uh, mental state when she was arrested? Is competency going to play a role here? And what's the timeline for getting her back to Las Vegas? So I'll address the second part of your question, not the first. So in the timeline is right now she will have an option to waive extradition. If she waives extradition, she would probably be back in Las Vegas by the end of the week. If she fights that, then we'll obtain a governor's warrant, and that could be up to 30 days. Vanessa? Do you believe that Leah may have been the victim of long-term abuse, and do you know if any child welfare agency had ever been involved with this family? There is nothing that indicates there was any type of long-term abuse whatsoever, nor any type of involvement with social services prior to that. Kate? I know you're not releasing uh, the cause of death right now, but is it fair to say that he died in Vegas? Yes, we are 100% confident that he was uh, killed here in Clark County. Uh, specifically, we believe he was actually killed in Mountain Springs. Yes? Uh, is there any indication between Rodriguez and Liam's father that there was any sort of domestic strife between them that would cause her to maybe take the child or anything? No, there again, you know, and I kind of addressed that. There was nothing, you know, obviously they've been together, you know, I don't know their, you know, the personal relationship as far as that, but there was nothing that indicates that there was no prior involvement with the San Jose Police Department. So I'll take one more question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I know you mentioned toxicology. Was there a weapon involved in the um, slaying? I'm, I'm not going to answer that question specifically. Yeah, I'll take one more. You listened to the, the message from her, to, um, her significant other here. She intended on finding a house and moving out. Did you believe that message? Do you reasonably believe that she had good intent when she moved? I don't know what her intent was, but I'll tell you from listening to the message, you know, there was nothing that indicated any type of suspicion or foul play. And that's, you know, what the father expressed as well. The father was, you know, didn't know what to do after the week took place, that's when he contacted the police, and then he still, again, chose not to make a report for any type of child abduction. They documented it per his request, and that's what took place there. All right. Thank you. Know, you know where Samantha and Liam stayed on the night of the 26th, Wednesday night? That would have been the night they were less seen in Laguna than Victorville, presumably coming here. So again, still early on. I do know where she stayed on the 27th, so we're still working those type of things, and we eventually have those answers. Were they in a hotel, or did they stay in the car? On the 27th. On the 27th, they were in a hotel here locally. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.